When you were on your ops, did you have any occasions where you felt really in danger? No, we did have one or two things happen to us. The worst one was on a trip to Munich where we had a mid-air collision over, just come up to the River Rhine. We'd been flying in cloud, we climbed, was climbing up out of it. We were at our proper height, but we got above this and another crew thought they'd do the same and they came up and he stuck his port wing into our fuselage. They didn't survive unfortunately and I've been to where they were buried in France, in Alsace. And uh, our skipper managed by well, good airmanship, airmanship for all of us. We got the airplane back to Manston and then eventually well, we came up by train. The funny thing about that was, when we uh, we had no money, of course, and so they had to give us some money. We had to get our train up, take us up to Bimbrook again. And uh, when we got to, I don't know what station it was, I think it was Waterloo, more than likely. And uh, we were stopped by the service police, because we had flying boots on. We were still carrying half a flying kit. I'd got some secret stuff out of my turret. We had special stuff here in those days. And uh, service police stopped us and thought, asked us what they think we were doing. Well, my skipper told them in good, uh, good Australian language. <laughs> and then, I don't know, it was about we were scared, because all, all these things, you know, happen so quickly, really do, you know. It, it hit us bang, and we kept control of the aircraft, which was the main thing. Uh, I don't think we got scared. I think we got a little bit apprehensive at times. But the day we had our mid-air collision, or oh, about seven days later, I'll be way out on ops again. There was no, oh, you poor lad, something like that. Get on with the job, and that's what we did. And that was the night up we went out and went to uh, Nuremberg, and I got myself a JU-88. No, we just didn't think about these things. We were too young, we were happy, and <laughs> it was a good life. So you were full of confidence? Yeah, well, we had a good crew. And that is it. Isn't that really? And you came back knowing full well that you've got to go out there again, and you had a job to do. And we did. Were... That was what it was all about. I don't need to tell you what the pay for a sergeant air gunner was. <laughs> seven pounds, seven and seven and six a day. Mind the pint of beer was only about ten pence. <laughs> so it was all in relationship. When you were out um, on your, your missions, did you ever think about the people back here who had been bombed or were being bombed? I mean, that was principally London. Well, I was quite aware of people being killed in London in air raids. I was when we dropped bombs in Germany. But the thing that I always used to think about was the fact that we did aim for legitimate targets. Now, if you look around our country now, even today, where there's a built-up area and there's factories, what else is there? Houses. Where do people live? Because they want to live near their work. Mm. Well, therefore, if you're going to bomb that factory, unfortunately, you're going to kill some of the people who work there. And of course, there is the other way of looking at it. These people that worked in factories making whatever it was, munitions, tanks, aeroplanes, that is war potential. Isn't it? It's war potential. It is, yeah. And therefore, <laughs> you know, if you lose a few, that slows up production. It, it's terrible to think, you know, that there were, I mean, I don't think that the, and from what I've seen, the German, ARP, like our air raid precaution people, it wasn't up to our standard. Because they never thought it was going to happen. No. We just didn't do it for fun. We knew anyhow. 
we've got to win that war. Because if we didn't win, you and I wouldn't be here today. Well, you did a very incredible and brave job. Until uh, we'd done our 33, we did 33, and then, uh, well, the war, we, we knew the war was coming to end. We did Operation Manor from here, and also Operation Exodus, that was fitting back prisoners of war from, from Brussels. And then after that, well, young sir, let me see. All the Australians got posted to uh, West Kirkby for ready for, for well, they said it was going to be for Tiger Force, but Tiger Force never came about. I found myself uh, up to Liverpool on a boat and sent out to India for two and a half years. And I didn't moan about that at all, I really enjoyed it. Because I was doing a funny flying job out in India on DC-3s, all I had to do was dish out a meal box to, if we had passengers, make sure the freight was all right, you know, cargo and bits and pieces. I got sent home and uh, I was seconded to BOAC doing the same job on Lancastrians flying out to Singapore and Sydney. Well, as far as Singapore, then Qantas took over from Singapore down to Sydney via Darwin. And uh, my number came up with DMOB and what was I going to do? Well, I already had a job in BOAC, so I stayed there. I stayed there five years. And then the RAF called me, asked me, called me back again. And I went back, and I went back into Coastal Command, Avro Shackleton. <laughs> so I felt quite at home with them. And I stayed in the Air Force until, uh, when was it? Five dollars. Nineteen seventy something, and uh, they said, "Tell and said to me, you can't go flying anymore. Your days of flying are finished." And I said, well, "In that case, I'll, I'll leave." And I did. And I went into civil aviation. And I went to a called company really called Trade Winds of Gatwick. We flew freight, and I was the company's chief loadmaster and safety officer. Till I was sixty-five. Well, I was on Operation Manor and uh, where we dropped food to the Dutch before the end of the war. And we've been back there as a group, some of us, and they make such a fuss of us for dropping food to them. Mm -hmm. You know, they come up and hug you, and you, you save my granny, and rather emotional. Yeah. You should be very proud of yourself. Well, I'm proud of you anyway. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> but. Think... Uh, well, I suppose I've had a good life. I've been flying all my life. I've done something I've thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, you know, that's the way life's gone. I've had a good life, really. Can't grumble. I'm still here. <laughs>